Welcome to Windsor for this celebration of the Sovereign's official birthday. And given the extreme circumstances of recent months, it's an event that few believed would happen. It won't be the grand parade that we're used to seeing every year. It's a smaller scale event, very much a personal tribute by the soldiers of the Household Division. It'll be just as enjoyable. So stay with us for the Queen's official birthday. It is a beautiful day in Windsor, and what we have today, in essence, is a rather elaborate version of a familiar event at the castle here. The changing of the guard, carefully adapted this year to provide a birthday tribute for Her Majesty the Queen. As the current Windsor Castle Guard, the 1st Battalion Welsh Guards are leading today's ceremony. They're engaged right now in the final preparations, final few minutes. It's been a, a very different event to the one that they had been expecting to lead today on horse guards in London for the full-scale parade. Uh, but the crisis caused by the pandemic made that impossible. So the Queen agreed to a more modest event with some lovely music, of course, as usual here at Windsor. Now, it's been a very busy three months for the armed forces, including the Welsh Guards who've stepped in to help the efforts to contain the pandemic. So they've had just a few weeks to prepare for today. And the event, of course, is even more challenging because of the demands of social distancing. We can see the distancing in evidence here with the bands, and those rules apply to all of us here today. Now, very soon, the guards and the band will all march towards that magnificent brown tower and into the quadrangle beyond magnificent sight bathed in sunshine today to pay their birthday tribute to the Queen. So we're looking forward as usual to some impressive drill, to some rousing marches and some great Welsh tunes in the mix. I have two experts with me to shed more light on what's going on, to add their thoughts on today's event. Colonel Hugh Boddington, who served with the Welsh Guards from 1981, retired from the army after 35 years service as Chief of Staff, London District, so he knows the Household Division inside out. And I'm also delighted to welcome once again the distinguished royal commentator, author and Daily Mail writer, Robert Hardman. Gentlemen, it's good to have you with us. A warm welcome. And Hugh, different circumstances today, but the same high standards. Yes, Hugh, thank you. Um, same high standards required. Uh, we're looking forward to every little bit of this, the whole uh, event. Uh, seeing Her Majesty in her 94th year, the timeless setting, listening to the Welsh music, the foot guards drill on this 200th anniversary of such an annual national event. And Robert, I suppose it's worth saying that it's remarkable that this is happening at all. Indeed, Hugh. Uh, until uh, some days ago, I don't think we even expected this event, but uh, it's been such a time of of, of upheaval. Um, I think so many people will find it reassuring today uh, to see Windsor looking so spectacular and let's not forget to see the Queen in action uh, fulfilling an engagement uh, live as it were for the first time really since uh, March the 9th. Well it's uh, nearly three months since that lockdown was announced and the national crisis has forced changes in so many areas of life and for the guards here today it meant being on the front line in a different way, facing a deadly new enemy. Stand! He's high! We found out that the battalion was going to be trooping the colour uh, some time ago. To be able to command a parade is a huge privilege. My father was in the Welsh Guards um, back in the 80s and 90s. I went when I was about five years old to go watch my first troop. Ever since then, it's always something that I've wanted to do. When it was announced that I was going to be ensign, it was a very proud moment. Two weeks after finding out that I was the ensign, I also found out that the trooping wasn't going to happen. The Prime Minister has announced drastic new measures to tackle the coronavirus outbreak. The terrible toll of COVID-19 has been starkly highlighted in the passing of a grim milestone. The number of deaths has gone over 40,000. I got told that we were going to be taken off public duties and then set up to help the national fight against the COVID virus. 
a small team. We went to support testers at Chessington. We were trained and tested and then became testers ourselves. So initially we tested members of the NHS and then the government opened it up then to the wider public. Upwards of a thousand people a day coming through. Dealing with this current situation has hit every strata of society. This was something that was affecting all of us, all of our families. It had an impact across the board. My wife is in the NHS. She's a practice manager in, uh, in Aldershot Med Centre. It is a worry, pretty stressful time for her. Things changing second by second. But to be shoulder to shoulder and working with the NHS staff and other civilian organisations has been a really good experience for the men and women. I've known for about three weeks now that we might be able to do a parade of some sorts. We've had two weeks to prepare. Normally, you'd start tube training months in advance. This parade is very different to what we'd normally do. It's conducted on grass, and you know, most uniquely of all, it is socially distanced. That is the hardest thing we've had to get across to the guys. Cover it off now. They're used to being an arm's distance away from each other. So as you can imagine, sort of almost double or treble the distance has been difficult. And the way we've done that is by use of a pace stick. Initially, it was a bit weird having to keep three paces between everyone. But now we've been doing it for the last two weeks, it's become normal. Present! Arms! There's every young guards officer's dream to troop their regimental colour in front of the Queen. Normally, I'd receive it from the regimental sergeant major and then do the flourish in front of Her Majesty. I now carry on the colour myself and slow march it through without doing a flourish. It's one less thing to muck up. <laughs> Commanding a battalion is a huge privilege, and I would be incredibly proud on the day to be standing in front of Welsh Guardsmen and recognise everything that the Army and wider services have done in support of the national fight against COVID-19. Just an insight into the activity of the past few months there. And a point we make every year as we look ahead to the parade is that the ceremonial skills of the very smart troops of the Household Division that we can see here today in Windsor, um, that shouldn't blind us to the fact that these are very much fighting soldiers and their regimental records tell their own story. And Hugh, we often talk about this dual role, the ceremonial and the operational, but we're also talking today about the skills that men and women have put in to different spheres of activity. Yes, the dual role is our identity, it's our raison d'etre. We are, we are well known for both, and both contain, as we can see, many different possibilities. For COVID-19, the Welsh Guards have had to adapt by reorganising, retraining, equipping, in order to reinforce nationwide. Uh, under the Joint Military Command London, uh, they have pre pre prepared for these eventualities and are able to react 24-7. And both roles, as you can see, complement each other. Some of the final inspections taking place, making sure that everything is absolutely perfect, extremely high standards for all the Foot Guard regiments, as we know, Welsh Guards not being an exception. And for the man leading the Welsh Guards today, getting this event ready in record time, a major challenge for Lieutenant Colonel Henry Llewellyn Usher, the field officer in brigade waiting. He's been talking to my colleague, Sonali Shah. Lieutenant Colonel, we've seen the Welsh Guards assisting the NHS and others in the national effort. Has there been an extra sense of pride because it's all been happening on home soil? Yeah, a huge amount of pride to be able to, to play our part um, in the support to the NHS and, and indeed some of the other agencies out there. Uh, in the fight against the virus, so you know, particularly important for us to be able to help in London uh, and support wherever we can. You haven't had long to get ready for today's event, and in that short time you've had to learn a new way of doing things, as well as adhering to social distancing rules. Will there be different nerves this time? Uh, well, I think you know, we, we, train, we train to train the nerves out. Um, we've trained pretty hard for the last three weeks, but uh, undoubtedly there'll be a few out there who are you know, the, the occasion adds a little bit to it, so there'll be some out there who are who have got a few nerves, but you know, I have every confidence that the professionalism of the boys and girl on parade will be will be spot on. What will today mean for the guards themselves? Well, it means an awful lot to all of us, you know, the, the honour and the privilege to be able to, to, to troop our colour 
uh, and to be able to mark Her Majesty's official birthday is fantastic. To be able to do it in our hometown is very special, where the battalion is based is, is a particularly special moment for all of us. I'm curious, what will be going through your mind as you're standing on the quadrangle waiting for Her Majesty to arrive? Um, I, I think I'll be like everyone else, focusing on you know, what I've got to do next, remembering the words of command uh, and waiting for Her Majesty to come out and just savouring that moment uh, and also you know, the, the real privilege to be able to represent our battalion, our regiment, but also the wider House of Division uh, and, and all of us who will be on parade will be focused on, on giving the best we can. Lieutenant Colonel, all the best for today. Thank you very much. Field officer talking to Sonali and as we get ready for the event, 1st Battalion Welsh Guards are engaging in the arms drill. This is something we haven't seen before on the day of a birthday parade. So Hugh, just tell us uh, briefly what's going on here. Yes, they're just preparing for the arms drill now. Uh, this is a warm-up of mind and body. It's time for everybody to switch on 100% for final rehearsal and synchronisation. And it represents the culmination of all those preparations that you've just heard about for this recently formed and diverse team. Now, if we keep a very sharp focused eye on these ranks, we will spot Guardsman Rian Morgan from Newport. Now, Rian is one of only two female Guardsmen in the Foot Guards regiments, and uh, she joined the Welsh Guards this year. She's been involved with the coronavirus testing facilities at Chessington. And we were chatting to Rianne just uh, earlier this week about this role. And she was very modest and uh, really being incredibly humble about the role. But uh, the point is, Hugh, she does represent a very important development uh, for the Guards regiments. Yes, Hugh, I, I think first to say that this is a big moment for everybody on parade. And Guardsman Morgan joins a long line of Guardsmen from Newport and South Wales in making the grade and joining the Welsh Guards. She told me that she wants no special attention uh, and that she wanted to join earlier than she has. Uh, and it's like serving with a band of brothers. But yes, her blood and regimental family are right behind her in this, her first big event. Well, we wish her well. We wish them all well, of course, everyone taking part uh, today uh, in this parade because it's a special event. It's a bit of a one-off event because of the circumstances of this year. And Robert, it's a remarkable thing to reflect that the last time there was any kind of birthday tribute involving uh, the armed forces here at Windsor was, believe it or not, back in 1895 in the closing decade of Queen Victoria's reign. That's right, Hugh. It was a uh, birthday parade for Queen Victoria. Um, worth noting that uh, back then it was to mark her 76th birthday and she watched the parade in a carriage today. I think we can confidently expect to see Her Majesty at the age of 94 uh, arriving on foot. Indeed, and we shall see that in a short while. We've been focusing initially on the Welsh Guards because it's their central role today. But let's not forget, all seven regiments of the Household Division have offered their support in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic, overseen by Major General Chris Geeker and his team. We're getting a broadly decreasing rate. Deaths are coming down both day on day, but also week on week. I'm just watching the continued support for the London Ambulance Service, and I'm noticing um, a decreasing wait time to which we've undoubtedly contributed. The Household Division have been hugely engaged with COVID-19. Just here in London, we've had the Welsh Guards and the Grenadier Guards furiously busy, like us, doing mobile testing teams to support this nation in their time of crisis. We're at Dulwich College to conduct a mobile testing unit supporting the NHS by freeing NHS members up to conduct their essential duties in hospitals, doctors' surgeries. For this test to be valid, you need to have sanitised hands. For me, this is very important. I'm very proud to be able to help out our country in any way. It's definitely the right place to be as far as work's concerned. And down on the Isle of Wight, Scots Guards have been working hard in support of the NHS and Public Health England. Due to the high proportion of vulnerable people on the Isle of Wight, it was especially important that we did our task as quickly as possible. Our mission was to double the bed capacity at St Mary's Hospital from 200 to 400 beds. We managed to do it with only 30 men in eight days. To be involved on the front line with the NHS in the fight against COVID-19 was very rewarding for the whole platoon. This evening, we were clapping for the NHS. 
my wife, uh, Sarah. She's a neonatal intensive care nurse, and I think it's really good for us in the Army to show our appreciation for all of the NHS. They are putting their lives on the line for the whole country. Yeah, so just lower your window for me, I'll pass the test through to you. When we look back and ask ourselves, what did we do during the coronavirus crisis? I can be hugely proud of what my soldiers have done this time not on state ceremonial public duties or on active operations, but here doing mobile testing. When the nation asked us to help, we were there. Very familiar tune. God bless the Prince of Wales and what makes the parade of course for so many observers is the quality of the music, an indispensable part of the Queen's official birthday celebration and we have musicians today drawn from all the foot guards regiments of the household division. Now the man in charge is Lieutenant Colonel Simon Hoare, commanding officer of the household division bands and uh, he stepped into the role last year, he's a notable composer in his own right last month playing a prominent part in the VE Day commemorations and a remarkable job to get all the musicians together for this event. He's been talking to Sonali. Lieutenant Colonel, when you took on this role, this wouldn't have been the event you were expecting. How have preparations been going? Well, it's been pretty good, actually. Musicians have been on lockdown, as well as doing other duties related to COVID-19. Um, but they all practice, they've got their instruments at home, so they're all busy beavering away and, and uh, keeping up their instrumental performance. So as we've come together for these rehearsals for today's ceremony, um, I think the preparations have gone quite well. Like all of us, all the musicians will have to be two metres apart. What challenges has that created? Um, enormous challenges actually, uh, but we've done a lot of rehearsal on that. One of the particular difficulties is as the band counter marches back through itself, normally the musicians are shoulder to shoulder. Of course, we've got to maintain social distancing at all time, and, and we are doing that. And, and to help that, we're feathering the band as we come into the counter march. So the, the front of the band expands to twice its width. So as musicians counter march back through the ranks, we still maintain um, some two and a half metres distance between each player. Under normal circumstances, the Queen's official birthday is marked at Horse Guards Parade, but today you'll all be on the quadrangle. What difference will that make acoustically? Well, I think the acoustic there is a little bittersweet. Um, for a start, we're on grass, which soaks up the sound and kind of doesn't help us. But the sound travels and just cascades off those beautiful castle walls and resonates around the whole of Windsor Castle. So I think on balance, it's a pretty good acoustic and the musicians will really enjoy performing there today. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you. We look forward to hearing and seeing your musicians today. Lieutenant Colonel Simon Hoare there talking to Sonali and uh, his colleague uh, is in the midst of the players here, Major Stuart Halliday, who's Director of Music of the Welsh Guards. Uh, and in September, he'll be celebrating 35 years in the army. He's helped uh, put the music selection together today. So no surprise, he's chosen some of the best Welsh marches for us all to enjoy. Great sight of the lower ward of Windsor Castle looking up towards the uh, St George's Chapel and the uh, Round Tower. And since early March, Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness Duke of Edinburgh uh, have been here at Windsor. Uh, this castle has been a royal residence for 900 years. The Queen will be the only member of the royal family attending the parade today. And uh, Robert, one noticeable absentee among several, it must be said, the Prince of Wales, who of course is Colonel of the Welsh Guards. Indeed, Hugh, yes, the Prince of Wales has uh, been Colonel of the Welsh Guards now for 45 years, longest serving Colonel in their history. Uh, and. Uh, we won't also we won't be seeing uh, other members of the family. I mean, it's worth remembering this is always normally the great family get together when we see not just the senior members of the family, but the the whole extended family. Uh, con concluding, of course, with the scene on the balcony for the fly pass. We won't see that today. We won't see, uh, for example, the Duke of Cambridge in his role as Colonel of the Irish Guards either. Uh, we'll just see Her Majesty, but um, I'm quite sure that all the family are, as we speak, watching and waiting. So, already in the lower ward, 
for the officers to take up their positions, which will happen in just a few seconds time. And we will be seeing three officers uh, who will be ready to command the men as they are marched up to the quadrangle. We'll see the major of the parade and the adjutant, and then they'll be followed by someone we've heard from already, who is the commanding officer, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Llewellyn Usher. Um, they're joining uh, the various uh, ranges of uh, uh, soldiers who've been coming here today because these of course represent the Welsh Guards but they are representing the Household Division in all its quality and all its uh, glory. So the Major of the Parade, Major James Aldridge, whose great-grandfather was one of the first officers commissioned into the newly raised Welsh Guards in 1915 today's adjutant captain ed clark it's his last working day in the army by the way taking over his role will be his brother captain will clark and their younger brother cameron's due to join the regiment in august so the major and the adjutant and they'll be followed by the commanding officer lieutenant colonel henry llewellyn usher today's field officer in brigade waiting and he took command of the regiment in March of last year. God! Sean! Love! Arm! So it's the turn of the colour party to take their positions. Usually, the colour would be carried by a colour sergeant and passed to the ensign by the regimental sergeant major. But in order to maintain social distancing in today's event, the ensign today will carry the colour for the entire ceremony. And uh, he is Second Lieutenant Billy Richardson. A word about Billy, because uh, Hugh uh, knows his father rather well, don't you, Hugh? Yes, Ollie and I joined the army uh, together in 1981. Um, Ollie was a well-loved leader of the Little Iron Men in Number Three Company. We both deployed to uh, Kenya for training, and we were placed on standby for operations anywhere in the world, relying on the unexpected to happen, which, in, of course, they duly did. So we sailed south uh, to the Falkland Islands in May, and we were both on the Sir Galahad when it was struck, sadly, on the 8th of June. Mercifully, Ollie is a survivor and went on to marry Mary Ann, a wonderful wife and mother. And so we have Billy on parade here today, uh, who ironically deployed, deployed to the Falkland Islands recently to continue his father's work in deterring aggression. So the field officer gives the command, they step off on their way to the quadrangle for this year's birthday tribute. The march is Piccadilly, composed by Major Leslie Statham, served with the Welsh Guards, a prolific composer in his day. His marches are still very familiar today. So let's enjoy some of the music, shall we, because it's one of the great highlights.
So we are enjoying some great music and the band's being led towards the quadrangle and the round tower by the senior drum major and the Welsh Guards drum major. Welsh Guards on parade today have been selected from all three companies of the 1st Battalion, which is quite unusual. The troops of the Household Division have been continuing to guard the Royal Palaces throughout the lockdown, although the ceremonial guard changes have been cancelled. And it's a good moment to you to ask you about Windsor because you have a very vivid memory of being here on duty. Well, yes, Hugh, like many other young Household Division officers, I did my first guard duty here within a week of leaving training at Sandhurst. It's a lovely command, working with the Royal Household and the police. It's a great preparation for the bigger stage in London. And if you're really lucky when you're on guard, you may well be invited up for dinner with Her Majesty. Robert, it's worth uh, us asking as well, because many viewers will be wondering, with all the residences that the Queen tends to share the year among, um, Windsor was the natural choice for this lockdown period. It was, Hugh. Uh, the uh, crisis began, really, just as the Queen was preparing to head here for Easter Court anyway, and uh, she's now been here. It's probably her longest spell, continuous spell, at Windsor Castle uh, throughout her life. Uh, but this is very much home. Uh, there we see the, the, the estate, uh, the Windsor Great Park. I mean, this is a place she, she was here as, a, as a, a girl during the war. This is where she made her very first broadcast, famously in 1940. Uh, this is a place where she she really she went to school. Most of her school lessons were conducted here. So uh, it's 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 home, um, and, and it's why today the the sight of the of the, of the Welsh Guards coming here onto the quadrangle for her it, it will just be a, a, a great moment. Well, more than aware of the fact that the Queen is uh, keeping a sharp eye on events is the Major General Chris Geeker, uh, and among his party are Colonel Crispin Lockhart who represents both the lifeguards and blues and rolls of the House of Cavalry. Major Victoria Flood, commanding officer for the King's Troop Royal Horse Artillery. Also present are the Brigade Major, Lieutenant Colonel Guy Stone, and the Garrison Sergeant Major, Andrew Stokes, who always plays a leading role, of course, in organising these events. And Hugh, as we mentioned, the Brigade Major and the Garrison Sergeant Major, uh, they are the key axes, aren't they? Oh yes, they lead the design team on behalf of the Major General. They're the masters of the detail and they have to brief all the participants on all the detail. Uh, Guy Stone, his two potential officer sons potentially watching on, he's got a potentially taxing task of obtaining pinpoint accurate weather forecast to recommend a go or no-go decision for this parade, uh, as I found when I was in the job. Vern Stokes, he's the fourth garrison Sar major that I've seen, and as his regimental motto goes, he's second to none, and I find him the least frightening of the four. So they enter the quadrangle, great royal standard, the birthday standard flying above the keep, the round tower, the statue of King Charles II overlooking the quadrangle here as the mass band appears. The Welsh Guards arrive. And there we have the great site of Windsor Great Park extending way beyond the castle. We remember, of course, the very happy day of the wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex two years ago when they taken around the park in that carriage procession. Music changing to the Auxiliary Territorial Service March. A significant choice today because the ATS was the regiment in which Her Majesty served in the war. And the tune starts, a tune that Her Majesty will know very well having joined the ATS in 1945, becoming the first female member of the Royal Family to join the armed services as a full-time active member. So I think it's fair to say before Her Majesty steps out from the Sovereign's entrance, they'll be listening very carefully to the quality of the music 
and keeping an eye on the precision of the drill and movement of the guards here because their experience at these events and parades uh, cannot be beaten, frankly. So not long before Her Majesty the Queen appears and will take her place on the saluting base, but also in residence here, as I mentioned, is the Duke of Edinburgh, who just a few days ago celebrated his 99th birthday. And uh, the palace published this rather wonderful image of the couple, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, and Robert, I think it's a fair bet that the Duke himself will, having retired from public duties uh, a few years ago uh, and having reached the grand age of 99 will be looking out from probably one of these windows just to see that everything's in tip-top condition. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right here as a, as, a, as a colonel of both, former colonel of both the Welsh Guards and the Grenadiers, uh, the, the Duke uh, knows this, uh, knows the, 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 the parade uh, routine better than uh, almost anyone with the possible exception of the Queen. Uh, for him, uh, this is this is just as much uh, home. Uh, he, he is actually, although he's retired from public life, as you said, one thing he hasn't retired from, he's still the ranger of the Great Park. We see the Great Park there beyond the castle walls. Uh, he keeps an incredibly close eye on everything that happens hereabouts. Don't forget, when, when Windsor had its terrible fire in 1992, it was the Duke who, who led the, uh, the restoration work. Um, everything about this place uh, bears his imprint, so he will be keeping a very close eye on everything today. So here we have the colour party, which will soon detach to wait on the north side of the quadrangle. Two sentries with the ensign are Sergeant Rhys Brown, recently returned from Belize, and Sergeant Rhys Rutledge, who joined the regiment a decade ago. And he's been widely praised for designing and managing the defeat, don't repeat scheme that is aimed at helping vulnerable young people and uh, former prisoners to change from their previous lives uh, to realize their potential in society. The color itself, the color being trooped today in the heart of this ceremony was presented to the regiment in 2015 by the Queen here at Windsor. That was the scene on the day in question celebrating the centenary of the raising of the Welsh Guards by King George V during the First World War in 1915. The colour is richly embroidered with the Welsh dragon and features the regiment's motto, Cymru am Bith, meaning 
Wales Forever, as well as 21 of the regiment's 47 battle honours. One of those is the Falklands, and tomorrow marks the 38th anniversary of the end of that conflict in June of 1982. And Hugh, we've already mentioned uh, the conflict itself and uh, your personal connection with some of those involved and your presence there. And that date of 1982 has enormous resonance, especially for the Welsh Guards. Yes, indeed, Hugh. Uh, that colour is a torch that sheds light on many of our past conflicts. And lest we forget, it is the 80th, 80th anniversary of the defence in Arras, Dunkirk and Boulogne, when the Welsh Guards were the only formed unit in, in Arras. For the Falkland Islands, the battalion played its part in the nation's victory, with 38 sadly lost and many more wounded and suffering. But boys and your families, we hold you in our hearts, and the regiment is here for you. There's the officer in overall charge of these troops. Indeed, all the troops of the Household Division, also known as the General Officer Commanding London District, and that is Major General Chris Geeker, who took up his post last November. He's been speaking to Sonali. Major General, this is your first ceremonial occasion since taking over command of the Household Division. I know you're trained to expect the unexpected, but have the past few months been particularly unforeseen for you? Well, I don't think any of us could have expected the summer that is um, rolling out in front of us. But I think for us, it underlines the fact that we are both operational soldiers. We conduct operations wherever we're required to do so, in this case in the United Kingdom, but we're also high-class ceremonial soldiers, and that is what we're going to see a bit of this morning. Why is it so important for the Household Division to mark the Queen's official birthday this year in particular? Well, I think part of it is a tribute to the Queen for her guidance to the nation during this very difficult time. But also, Trooping the Colours are well established and much loved part of the ceremonial summer. Um, and so custom is important. And even though it's much reduced, um, we're very proud to be doing it this morning. You're in charge of overseeing the planning of today's event and you've had to adhere to social distancing guidelines as well as remember those historical protocols. So I think for us, we're very mindful um, of the circumstances and we must provide a parade which is appropriate to the national situation. As you say, it must be socially distanced, but then it's got to knit in some of the well-established traditions of trooping the colour. And so doing that has been a great challenge, but we've enjoyed doing it. We've seen the Guardsmen being part of the national effort, assisting the NHS on the front line. How has that been, being on home soil? So I think everybody has been hugely proud to be a part of what has been an amazing national effort. Uh, I think for everybody involved, the opportunity to help, the opportunity to support the NHS and the healthcare sector and to be part of this great national effort at a time like this is something we've enjoyed doing and we've been really proud to be a part of. Major General, thank you so much. Major General uh, Chris Geeker talking to Sonali just a short while ago because he's now on parade ready for this uh, birthday tribute to Her Majesty the Queen and just to underline his responsibilities for all of the troops on parade today, indeed all of the troops in the household division. Um, it's interesting, Robert, isn't it, that we've been talking about the armed forces role in recent months. Uh, stepping in to help the health service and other public bodies during this pandemic and of course uh, the fact that the lockdown has changed the lives of millions of people. Uh, we're also talking of course about the royal family because the kind of work that they would be undertaking has of course been completely transformed and in so many areas cancelled. 
Absolutely, Hugh. I, I, I think uh, perhaps what, what, what indicates it more than anything is if you look at the court circular, the uh, official account of royal engagements, every single one now is by video link, by telephone. Uh, the Queen in April held the first ever uh, meeting of the Privy Council uh, by video link. She's been communicating with ambassadors, with uh, prime ministers of other realms. All the members of the royal family have been doing this and they've adapted very quickly. Uh, the Prince of Wales has uh, done an extraordinary number of uh, broadcasts now uh, on everything from uh, a broadcaster to cheesemakers, to the Samaritans, to, uh, to, to the Commonwealth. And uh, as one commentator put it, he's become a sort of king of Instagram. As one of his team said the other day, he's been in front of the camera almost as often as Hugh Edwards of late. I think we'd better steady on there, Robert, don't you? Um, the, the interest for me was the fact that the Queen, of course, uh, has undertaken not one but two televised addresses. Uh, one was to do with VE Day, the other was to do with a, a real message to all the people of the UK during this pandemic crisis. Yes, the, the, uh, the, the first broadcaster, coronavirus broadcast, as, as many people call it, was came at an absolutely crucial moment. The nation needed some reassurance in that particularly dark period and we had those uh, remarkable words from the Queen uh, culminating of course in, in her message that we will meet again and then on on V on VE day uh, her, her, her message again was you know never never give up never despair um, and I think uh, as ever in in times of crisis as we saw uh, as previous generations will remember during the war uh, in, in times of crisis uh, we do turn to our, our, our monarchy and uh, and and that's exactly what we're seeing here again today very soon the band will strike up with one of the best tunes of all time. It is the Welsh Guard Slow March Men of Harlech, which dates from the 18th century, said to have been inspired by the seven year siege of Harlech Castle during the Wars of the Roses in the 15th century. Let's just enjoy it, shall we, in all its majesty. So in the 68th year of her reign, a rare first for Her Majesty, the longest reigning monarch in British history, she'll mark her official birthday not on Horse Guards Parade and at Buckingham Palace, but here at Windsor Castle. The Queen, escorted by Lieutenant Colonel Mike Vernon, the controller of the Lord Chamberlain's office, Vice Admiral Tony Johnson Burt, Master of the Household, and she will also be accompanied by her equerry major, Nana Kofi Chumasi Ankara. So the ceremony will begin at 11 o'clock. The field officer will order the royal salute.
Windsor Castle Guard will move to the right in threes. Right, turn. to the south side of the quadrangle to the tune of the Rising of the Lark, making the way for the band to perform the majestic march, Les Huguenots. In just a moment, it is one of the most popular military marches. Dressing, right, dress. Shoulder, arms. Shoot! We'll be watching out for a new manoeuvre, allowing the band to maintain the social distancing. While turning, as they set off, they'll begin fanning out to create more room. It's been called feathering because of its distinctive extending formation.
drum major signaling that it's the quick march music changing to the tune triple crown which has been heard at two birthday parades in the past 1973 and 1998 the band performing the spin wheel turning 180 degrees while maintaining that social distancing it's not a move we've seen before the queen seems to be enjoying the music element of the traditional parade that'll be familiar to viewers the moment for the lone drummer to break away to join the guard Dan Corporal Chusa Siwale originally from Zambia joined the Corps of Drums in 2011 he's been awarded the exemplary leadership award while deployed in Afghanistan and rated top student in his class drummer playing eight bars of a field signal called the drummer's call reminding us of the time when communications on the battlefield were delivered by drumbeat first battalion now preparing for the next Go! phase of the parade Windsor Castle Guard We'll move to the right. Right! Turn! The guard will be setting off to the rousing tune of the British Grenadiers to take their position in the centre of the quadrangle. Castle Guard will advance. Right, turn. Now in the traditional parade, the regimental Sergeant Major would now be taking the colour from the colour party, handing it to the ensign. But due to the social distancing we mentioned, that isn't possible. So today, unusually, the ensign is carrying the colour for the entirety of the ceremony. Guard, dressing. Right, dress.
And we have the regimental sergeant major, Michael Parry, detaching from the guard to join the colour party. And he's drawn his sword to protect the colour. Escort to the colour! Sir! Escort to the colour! By the centre! Slow! March! Colour party, stepping off to the tune escort to the colour, ready to carry out the ceremonial heart of this uh, event as they troop the colour through the ranks. This serves the purpose, of course, not just of the ceremony of Trooping the Colour, it's a guard change. 18 soldiers making up the body of the parade, the new guard at the castle for the next few days, under the command of the ensign, Billy Richardson. And Hugh, just to underline the pride of the family and the regiment. Yeah, this is definitely Billy's moment, and his parents and all his many followers now will be, mix, uh, will be looking with a mix of pride, joy, and some nerves in equal measure. Colour party now rejoining the guard, ready for the second royal salute of this event. Guard, royal salute, present! So the colour has been trooped, the ceremony is complete, the field officer approaches Her Majesty to let her know the guards are ready to march off. Your Majesty's guard is ready to march off, ma'am. God, slow arms. Windsor Castle Guard will move to the right in threes. Right, turn. Commanding officer moves to the front of the guard, ready to lead his troops from the quadrangle after this ceremony.
no formality as they approach Her Majesty. Guards will pay their own individual tribute to their Commander-in-Chief. This is the moment, Hugh, when there is some eye contact between the guards and Her Majesty. It is, for each of them, a special moment. Yes, the guardsmen are now turning into the home straight, and it's their final chance to impress Her Majesty and all of those looking. And yes, if you're really lucky, you'll catch the twinkle in Her Majesty's eye. Majesty looking on and no doubt enjoying the tunes of the Welshman arranged by Lieutenant Colonel Hannam, written for the Welsh Guard's 75th anniversary back in 1990 based on several very familiar Welsh melodies and folk tunes. I think it's fair to say it wasn't the official birthday celebration that the Queen would be expecting at this time of year, but the fact that there's been a birthday celebration of any kind during this national crisis is a remarkable achievement. Hugh, some final thoughts on how this parade has passed off? Well, it was a pity not to be on horse guards, but that was a fitting event, and it's the least that we could do, and indeed the most that we could do under the conditions. Well executed, maintaining and setting standards, the battalion is now looking forward to its next tasks and preparing for the next unexpected. But we look forward to the household troops next year on horse guards for our great sovereign. Robert, in this rather strange and very sad year in many ways, what does the rest of the year, do you think, hold for Her Majesty and members of the royal family? Well, Hugh, if monarchy stands for anything, it's for stability, it's for continuity. I think today, what a, what a wonderful sight. It's probably the most memorable birthday parade I can recall. No crowds, no royal family, not even a birthday honours list. But here we have the monarch and her guards. Nice to see her as well wearing that diamond leek, the brooch of the Welsh guards. Uh, and, and so it's very much about uh, uh, keeping calm, carrying on. We've got Armed Forces Day coming up later this month, uh, VJ Day, Day, the 75th anniversary. The Queen will be at the heart of those commemorations uh, later in the year. But uh, I think today uh, a really wonderful, uh, reassuring reminder that some things really do carry on. Well, the Garrison Sergeant Major said before the event that although they couldn't deliver the usual scale of the normal birthday parade, they could nonetheless deliver exceptional quality and Hugh and Robert, I'm no doubt, would agree with me that they've certainly done that. So this year's special occasion is over. In effect, birthday parade for the Queen. A one-off event, really, in modern times, due to the challenges posed by the pandemic. Just a few weeks to remind you to put this event together, and it's been a real triumph for the Household Division and the Welsh Guards in particular. And you can see it all again, because our Highlights programme is on BBC One this evening at 5 to 6. But for now, from my special guests, Colonel Hugh Boddington and Robert Hardman, my colleague Sonali Shah, all of the BBC team at Windsor, thank you for watching and goodbye.